The following program is a production of WLRN. quiet place, I have learned how to attack the waters with the same ferocity I fought a deadly disease. My battle started in 2007, when I was diagnosed with stage 3 invasive breast cancer. The news of this intruder inside me turned my life around and affected the people close to me. My very femininity was deeply touched. I was left with scars all over my body. but. I learned how unique I am, and I developed a great appreciation for life, friends, and family. This is how I embarked on a new journey as a part of a group of powerful women, all breast cancer survivors. This is our story, where as dragon slayers, we race together to cross the finish line. This is Kim Bonomo, the captain and president of SOS, Save Our Sisters, the only all-breast cancer survivor dragon boat team in South Florida since 2007. She has given so much passion and enthusiasm to the team that in a very short period of time, SOS is ready to take on the Canadian Island Breaststrokers, the world reigning champions, right here in Key Biscayne, Florida. Jillian Brill is our youngest survivor. She was diagnosed at age 30 with stage four breast cancer while living in New York. After all her treatments, doctors considered her a walking miracle. Today, she is a very healthy 38-year-old paddler on a mission to increase breast cancer awareness among younger women. At 64, Bernie Longobardi is an inspiration for all. With steady, rhythmic strokes, she sets the pace for the rest of the ladies to follow. Sitting at the front of the boat, she shows the world what a survivor can do. Go, Mary. Go, Mary. Go, Mary. <laughs> this is Mari Carrillo. Bringing a powerful and long reach, she sits in the middle of the boat, the engine room, digging deeper into the water to propel the boat forward. When looking at Mari, during practice or in the races, you can see the determination of a warrior who left the shadows of breast cancer behind her. Harry is our coach. He is a former Marine Sergeant who, with a strong voice and a kind heart, pushes us to the limits, making us dig inside those places we didn't know we had. On the boat, he doesn't see breast cancer survivors. He sees competitive women. He believes in us. Harry is one of a kind. Heading off for practice on Key Biscayne is the best thing for Kim. That's my favorite time on Saturday morning coming over Rickenbacker Causeway and it shows off Miami and I see Miami, I feel like I'm queen. I feel like I'm flying and I'm going to do my most favorite thing. I'm going to paddle and I'm gonna be with my team. I'm gonna be with my girls. It all started one year after she finished her treatments. We're racing against breast cancer. Exercise is one of the key ingredients to not getting a, a reoccurrence of the, of the disease. And what better way to exercise than with 25 of your friends, women, who have gone through a similar experience in life. It's, it's very empowering. Attention, please! Go! Dragon boating is a perfect team sport. The crew needs to move in unison by mirroring each other's movement as the paddles enter the water at the same time. 
This creates a connection between the team members that goes far beyond the sport. It's like a floating support group. We're much, much more than a support team. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as athletes now, which for an average of 50-year-old women is a pretty incredible feat. I personally find the exercise very empowering. I get out there and very often will envision the uh, paddle and the water as if I'm feeding this cancer. And the repetitive activity of it is just so, uh, it's, it's like meditation. I get out there and clear my mind and all I think about is how I'm getting stronger. I'm beating, I'm beating this cancer. I think we do it first for the camaraderie. We do it to be together. We do it to be a symbol to the community and to other survivors that, um, that aren't dragon boating, to let them know that there is life after a diagnosis, that a diagnosis of breast cancer is not a death sentence. For Kim, losing her hair to chemotherapy was a metaphor for her own weakness and mortality. Today, breast cancer is a blessing in disguise. If by some miracle I was given the chance to go back in time and given the choice to go down one road that would, uh, would spare me the breast cancer, I can't tell you that I would take it. Because I like what's happened to me. I like what I've done with it. I love dragon boating. I love these women. It's been a great experience. Jillian was only 29 when, through a self-breast examination, she found a lump that felt like the size of a pea. My doctors told me not to be concerned, and I was unfortunately misdiagnosed. Um, the first time of diagnosis, I was 30 going on 31, and at that point, it was stage 3. Um, the cancer had metastasized to the lymph node region. I had 21 lymph nodes removed. After a, a course of treatment, it had, um, we had determined that it had spread to the spine, which basically means it's stage four. Jillian became a warrior and took an active role in the decisions about her treatments. When I was initially diagnosed, they told me that I was gonna be on weekly chemo for the rest of my life. And my first reaction was, no, I'm not. What do I need to do to you know, to, to get better without having to be on chemo the rest of my life. That was just inconceivable to me. So inconceivable to her, she decided to be part of a clinical trial, which involved new high doses of chemotherapy, along with a bone marrow transplant. Basically what they do is they collect stem cells or bone marrows from my own body, and they give you enough chemo to take away anything bad Unfortunately, it also takes away some of the good cells, and they rescue you by giving you your bone marrow back so that you're able to survive it. It wasn't just the physical pain, but it was the emotional pain of wondering, is this going to work? Is this really the miracle that's going to help me? What happens now? What happens after cancer? Did it work? So for me, the last round of chemo was like the last round of hope. In fact, the hope was there when she received the news. They told me I was in remission and that I was a walking miracle and that um, I would be okay. So I feel great. The lessons Mari Carillo delivers to her students at Champagna Catholic School in Hialeah go far beyond mathematics and volleyball. Her heavy arm upon the blackboard is a reminder of her messages of awareness, wisdom, and courage that she shared with her students. 
Through this experience, my students have learned that just because they listen to the word cancer doesn't mean it's the end. Chemotherapy is the hardest thing a breast cancer patient has to endure, but neither the weakness of her body nor the nausea and all the discomfort caused by it stopped Mari from rolling out of bed and heading out for work. At the time that I was going through treatment, my own kids were my students. So therefore, in, in the school environment, I needed to get that support. They were my co-survivors. They feed me with the energy that I needed to, to get in order to be able to go over and be able to withstand the treatment. At 39 years old, with three children and no health insurance, Mari fought breast cancer with the same attitude she carries during a race. I found the tumor through breast examination, and it was shocking, but I was not afraid. I don't know why. I have a lot of faith, and maybe that was my strength. I just dealt with it at that point in time, and I was very, very, very strong because of my kids. And I told them I didn't want to see anybody crying. This was not the end of the world. This was just the beginning in a different way. Today, Mari is already a five-year breast cancer survivor with many projects ahead of her. I have to be grateful to God that gave me all these years extra, additional, to enjoy life, to enjoy my family, to enjoy sports, to enjoy Dragon Body. At age 62, Bernie finished her cancer treatments and was up to a new challenge, to race in a dragon boat as part of Team SOS. My first reaction was, well, I'm not, I'm not that old to not paddle. I can paddle. I go to yoga. I am very active in my garden. I work, I work all the time in my garden and clean up and trim trees. So I go, no, if I can do those things, I can paddle. Uh, and I don't feel too old to paddle. With no previous experience other than being in a canoe, Bernie felt dragon boating with other breast cancer survivors was the perfect thing for her. I never thought that the, the paddle, I mean that the water was against me. I feel one with the water. I feel like I belong. Number one, number one, two, the battle is painful on the water. Life has taught us a lesson, and we carry a confident attitude on the water, even as we race against younger, fitter teams. To actually race with younger teams, and we look at them, we go, oh my God, they're so young in that boat. But it doesn't stop us. In fact, it creates the challenge even stronger. Bernie sits at the head of the boat in the stroker position. She needs to maintain absolute discipline to keep the paddling cadence. She inspires as she leads. I have said in many times, I think God chooses certain people to do this. And if I was chosen, then I better do uh, something with it afterwards. All right, this is an all breast cancer survivor dragon boat racing Go back team. Up too much. Yeah. SOS does so much more than just practicing. We go out into the community and try to spread breast cancer awareness. Uh, we set up information booths at certain festivals like the Chinese New Year. There we will talk to thousands of women about getting mammograms, talk to young women about the importance of self-examination. Our team is an example of what the statistics tell us, that with an early detection, there is a 98% survival rate. The current standard of care for the detection of breast cancer remains screening mammography. It just don't move, it's just one minute. The uh, ages and uh, conditions that uh, prompt one to seek a mammogram would be, first of all, uh, a screening mammogram in an asymptomatic woman or a woman that has no symptoms or problems of any kind should begin at age 40 unless there are any significant risk factors that uh, prompt it to begin earlier than that. They take every single part that it has breast tissue. So that means... Jillian and Madi got diagnosed before age 40. 
And thanks to self-examination, they can speak to the youth about getting to know their bodies. I'm here to promote self-awareness and to say that, you know, younger women do get this disease, men get this disease. It's a little bit different for us when you get a disease like this younger because the issues are different. Unfortunately, the cancer is more aggressive. So by us going to the schools and speaking to um, different children and reaching different people in the communities, we can help them raise awareness for their families and even for themselves. Early detection is key because this is not something to make you afraid or to say that everyone's going to get a disease, but know your bodies. So if you are used to doing self-examination, nobody better than you knows your body. You'll be